हेलो एवरी वन आई एम अंजलि सिंगर माई मास्टर थी सिस प्रोजेक्ट इज ऑन एनर्जी एफिशेंट एप्लीकेशन फॉर लो पावर डिवाइसिस ना एनर्जी एफिशेंसी कैन बी डिस्कस्ड एट थ्री स्टेजेस दैट इज फर्स्ट एट द आर्किटेक्चर लेवल एट द सिस्टम लेवल एंड एट द एप्लीकेशन लेवल एट द आर्किटेक्चर लेवल द प्रोसेसर यूजेज कैन बी रिड्यूसड बाई यूजिंग मल्टीकोर प्रोसेसर्स एट द सिस्टम लेवल वी कैन डू हार्ड डिस्क स्पेंड डाउन एंड कंपाइलर डिवेन ऑप्टिमाइजेशन टू अचीव एनर्जी एफिशेंसी सिमिलरली एट द एप्लीकेशन लेवल वी हैव लॉट ऑफ यूजर इन्फॉर्मेशन विच द डेवलपर कैन यूज एंड ही कैन चेंज द अलगोरिथम एंड द सोर्स कोड और द डिज़ाइन सो दैट एनर्जी एफिशेंसी कैन बी अचीव बट फॉर दिस द डेवलपर मस्ट हैव इन साइट अबाउट वेयर द एनर्जी इज एक्चुअली स्पेंड सो इन दैट केस वी विल बी स्टडिंग सम ऑप्टिमाइजेशन इन दिस टॉक In the basic phones, the basic functionality which we used to have is uh, calling, messaging, etc. Nowadays, um, phones are not only just used for the basic functionality, but also for the multimedia and mailing, etc. Many other applications have come. So, uh, adding the basic functionality and the main applications. So, adding the basic functionality and the main applications, we have uh, that is present in uh, the current uh, smartphones and um the new phones so hence there are more applications so the power consumption will be very high because each application is co uh, consuming very significant amount of power now many developers across the whole world many uh, developers across the whole world are uh, creating android applications and are uploading the applications on uh, android market so that many users can use them but they generally care about the functionality of the ap applications and not more on the power consumption hence what happens is the battery of the phones drain very quickly and the end users have to suffer so if the developer give as much importance to the functionality as to the power consumption as much to the functionality then the impact will be very high for um, improving the energy consumption now um, the if we see the division of power consumption among the different components then the major consume, consumers of power are gsm module cpu and display in display that includes lcd panel touch screen graphics driver and the backlight so if we can turn on if those components are not being used then we can just turn off the components so that the energy consumption will be reduced so the most effective power management approach is to shut down the unused power um, unused components and also it's been found that um, the free um, apps which we download have the free advertisement modules and they consume 65 to 75 percent of the total energy because there is lot of io energy which is being wasted in the advertisement modules hence in this talk we will be seeing Uh, many optimizations which which can be done at the application level so that each developer can contribute to saving the energy for the end users purpose first we'll see energy bugs then optimizations which includes uh, many network intensive applications etc and then some other optimization and conclusion so energy bug okay so in android every component remains in the sp uh, sleep state until it is waken up explicitly so that is in power management in android when we want to use any uh, component in our application then we need to then we need to define a wake lock instance so when we need need to use any component then we need to define wake lock for using that component and we have to define wake lock as one of the four uh, one of the options which will be discussing further wake lock is an instance of power manager dot wake lock class and while initializing it we have to pass a parameter that will be one of the options which will be discussing that will switch on or off the component switching on and off means that that component will either be in the high power state or the low power state when we switch switch on the component then that device or the component will uh, go in the high power state and similarly when we switch off the component then it will go in the low power state so in this diagram we can see many options which we can pass in the as a parameter while initializing the wake lock instance 
like if we pass pa partial wake lock that means only cpu will remain on so while initializing the wake lock we can pass any of these options suppose we pass partial wake lock that means the cpu will remain on like if in our smartphone if we don't use it for some time there is a period of inactivity then it will go in the sleep state so if we define this partial wake lock then it will remain the cpu will remain on irrespective of the inactive state uh, state similarly in the screen dim wake lock the cpu will remain on as well as the screen will remain dim and similarly screen bright wake lock and in full wake lock the cpu will remain on and the screen will be bright and keyboard backlight will be on so now we'll see how we can use this wake lock to actually uh, switch on any component before that uh, when we how to use this wake lock now when we define a, a wake lock is an instance to switch on or off any component initially if the component is in low power state and then we acquire the wake lock then the component will go from low power state to high power state similarly when we release the wake lock it will go from high power state to low power state now in this example we defined an instance of power manager dot wake lock class and initialized it with the option partial wake lock that means the cpu will remain on irrespective of the inactivity state so now when we do uh, write uh, wl dot acquire that means that cpu will should not go to sleep and now we can uh, write our code uh, and it will execute and after after finishing our application we should release the wake lock so that we can say that now cpu is free to sleep if it is inactive now energy bug what is energy bug it is defined as an error in the system uh, the system will behave very normally uh, the application will work as per the functionality operating system will work as per the functionality only that the there will be a huge huge energy drain unexpected amount of energy drain because the end user can't figure out why uh, so much energy is being drained but the functionality will be normal now we have uh, it is categorized in two parts no sleep bug and the looping bug in the no sleep bug suppose you um, acquired a wake lock in your some part of the code and you released you forgot to release then there will be a no sleep bug or if you have even released the wake lock in the code but due to some unexpected event or exception that code did not execute that will create no sleep bug now looping bug in looping bug suppose uh, your application is trying to connect to an outside server and that server has crashed now your application will keep on trying to contact the external server and the network device uh, which is trying to con connect will be remain will remain on and hence the energy is uh, wastage wasted now we will see as we, uh, we have seen in the previous talks that android applications have activity broadcast receiver services etc so we will see what is the expected way to write an activity and using wake locks now we know that activity started on on create event and it is destroyed in on destroy uh, callback when the activity is paused it is in it is not in the foreground but visible so in that uh, time when it is paused it will call the on pause callback if the developer has released the wake, wake lock in on destroy but not in on pause that will create a no sleep bug because the application is not running it is paused but still the device the component is in high power state so wake lock should be released in on pause callback also and then again it should be acquired in on release on resume callback similarly in service um there is a on start command if the service is bind service then on unbind and on handle intent callbacks at the end of these callbacks the desired task should be completed and the wake lock should be released and in the broadcast receiver also on receive callback should at the end of it it should complete the desired task as well as it should release the wake lock now for analyzing all these uh, whether the application has no sleep bug or not we can do state static data data flow analysis so that the no sleep code paths can be find out now we will see an example through the code that how this analysis can be done suppose we have this code 
uh, we are acquiring CPU wake lock here, uh, we are acquiring GPS wake lock here, we are releasing the GPS wake lock here and we are re releasing the CPU wake lock here. Now each use of the wake lock is defined as in definition, we are doing the reaching definition analysis here, reaching de definition data flow analysis. So each use of the wake lock is a, a definition, like uh, in this block B1, uh, CPU acquire is a definition which I have defined as D1 and I have denoted CPU wake lock as CW, when I am acquiring it I am assigning 1, so CW equal to 1. Similarly, GPS wake lock I have de uh, defined as GPS, it is the definition 2 and because I am acquiring it, I am assigning it 1. Similarly, in block 2, I am releasing the wake clock, so I am assigning 0 and it is the third definition. And similarly, in block 3, I am assigning 0 because I am releasing the wake clock for CPU. Now, for each, the, each of the block, I will calculate generate and kill. So, which definitions are generated and which um, definitions are being killed because of the other definitions. Now, if we see B1 block, there are two paths from, uh, two paths through B1, one is through B3 and one is through enter. So, enter does not have any information coming uh, outgoing which will be received by B1, but B3 is passing on the information to B1. That is now, I am defining here D1 and D2, so it is generating the definitions D1 and D2. Whereas, the previous definition which I have assigned for CW is CW equal to 0, that is D4. Now, I am again assigned CW equal to 1, so that def D4 definition will be killed by D1. So, I have written kill uh, in kill D4. Similarly, GPS equal to uh, 0 is there in D3, which will be passed on to B1 through B3. So, that will be also killed by D2. So, in uh, kill I have written D4 and D3. Similarly, for B2 I will calculate gen and kill. I have defined definition D3. So, D3 is in the gen uh, uh, set and in the kill since I am assigning GPS equal to 0, uh, B1 is passing on the in information D2. So, D2 definition will be killed because I have assigned uh, 0 now. Similarly, in B3 I have the new definition which is generated is D4 and with the definition which is killed is um, from D1 because of uh, the definition coming from B1 to B2 to B3, D1 will be killed. Now we will calculate the in and out, it is the process to calculate um, to do the data flow analysis for reaching definition. The purpose is at the end exit block, this end block I will find that which of the definitions are reaching ultimately here. So, that I can know that if any acquire definition is reaching here, that means there is a no sleep bug. So, I will do the reach, uh, reaching data flow analysis. I will calculate out and in for each block and ultimately you can see that in the exit block, I have D2, D3, D4. That means D2 D3 and D4, GPS 1, GPS 0 and CW equal to 0, these three definitions are reaching at the end of the, out of the exit, exit block. That means there is some path through which D2 is reaching, D3 is reaching and D4 is reaching. So, GPS equal to 1, acquire is also reaching through some path, which means there is a no sleep uh, bug. And as we can analyze from the path itself, if the code takes this path, enter to B1 to B3 to end, then the GPS still remains 1, it is not being assigned 0. So, we can calculate through all paths that there is a no sleep bug. Now, the other optimizations which we can do, first of all them is application optimization at the app design level. Now, when you are designing any application, then depending on the need, suppose your application is IO intensive, that is a video streaming application. So, you will need to read and write a lot. That means, if you, you compress your code or you compress your data and you read and write, then the data, uh, it will be more efficient. Whereas, if your application is CPU intensive, then you should, uh, you should use uncompressed code because the CPU usage will be less. Similarly, the applications needing continuous but variable workload, the pros, uh, scaling the frequency um, according to the workload will be most beneficial. 
so if the developer has all these information at the design time then he can use it to optimize the application for energy efficiency of the application next optimization is the battery virtualization now if i am going somewhere and i am playing games etc then my uh, most of the energy is wasted in playing games but i need my uh, my uh, mobile to have sufficient energy for receiving calls or messaging so i can so what they uh, can be done is we can have an battery allocation for each application class that is navigation phone games etc each application will be assigned certain fraction of battery as per the users policy so that they will not be uh, after certain fraction they will not be um, allowed to use these applications if the battery runs very low then they will not be allowed to play games etc like that so these can be enforced as a policy which my uh, friend earlier mentioned that uh, implementing the policy framework and we can create an android service which will periodically check if the fraction of the energy assigned to that application class is uh, uh, what is the amount of uh, energy that is fraction of energy which is left for that application class and accordingly taking the action in that service now the next application uh, optimization is in network applications now if i am trying to send any uh, any data transfer then first of all my network device will go in the high power state so the whole energy consumption during the net uh, data transfer is divided into three parts first is the ramp energy then transfer energy then tail energy yeah when the device go in the high power energy from low power state to high power state then that amount of energy is called the ramp energy when the actual data transfer happens then it is called the transfer energy and the rest of the time the device is in high power state is called the tail energy now as we discussed earlier network devices are the major consumers of the total energy consumed by the application now if our application is using 3g wifi or gsm then in 3g the tail energy is very significant amount as compared to the transfer energy whereas ramp energy is very small similarly in gsm the tail energy is uh, comparable to transfer energy but it is less compared to the 3g and in the wifi the scanning and association energy is very high and maintenance energy also to maintain the link so as we can see the is the tail energy consuming significant amount of energy but it is not doing any actual work during that uh, energy so how we can utilize this tail time in three ways we can utilize it that is the tail aggregation tail tuning and tail theft tail aggregation so what we do in tail aggregation is we defer any request transfer request that is coming to its deadline so that the uh, two or three transmissions will overlap and the tail time will be overlapped that is in the tail time of one transmission i will send the data of another transmission hence the tail time will be actually used for transfer and the inter transfer time will be decreases similarly in the tail tuning i will reduce the tail time now reducing the tail time will increase my state state promotions because if i reduce my tail time and in the new, near future i have a transmission again then again i have to switch on i have to transfer my network component into high power state so again and again there will be state promotions from high power state to low power state to high power state like that so it will instead create increase the power consumption hence if we are doing tail tuning then very high prediction accuracy is required now tail tail theft now uh, in the in the tail time a virtual tail tail time is ma uh, maintained along with the physical one so that now we can schedule the smaller transmission during the virtual tail time but the drawback is that if the tail time ends before the transmission then the transmission is cancelled so for that we can either divide the chunk make chunks of the uh, big transmissions into small ones and then we can send the small transmissions in the tail time virtual tail time now the other optimizations which can be done so um, as we discussed network devices and uh, display and cpu are the major consumers of power consumption 
So in the display, um, the backlight consumes highest power than the LCD panel and the frame buffer. So if for the backlight, if we change the ambience according to the ambience, if any very bright is uh, bright ambience is there, then we can reduce the brightness of the backlight so that the energy consumption will be less. Similarly, for the frame buffer etc., we can it is being the frame buffer is, is being refreshed at very high rate. So if we can Again and again, we are writing into the frame buffer, etc. So, if we can encode the frame buffer, then the size which will be again and again written will be very less. So, that encoding will compress the frame buffer and it will reduce the energy consumption. So, um, in the conclusion, we st uh, studied energy bugs, which um, we d uh, studied detection of energy bugs and possible causes which will, um, which will create the energy bugs, etc. And also, we studied different optimizations in the network intensive applications display for display we studied how we can um, reduce the power consumption etc and how we can utilize the tail time so that we can actually transfer use it and transfer more data during that time